Good afternoon guys from Carlisle bus station. Words I never thought I'd hear myself saying in my 55 years on this planet. But I am here and <laughs> with some trepidation it's got to be said because I'm taking the longest bus journey I have done so far. 3 hours and 45 minutes on borders, buses, the X95, all the way from here up to Edinburgh. Uh, God, no, I don't know why. Um, I have no idea what the bus looks like or, or anything really. Um, but, you know, we're going to try it, aren't we? Because that's the point of all this. So come with me on this journey. I'm just moving out of the way of a car here. And um, who knows um, what it's going to be like. I'll see you on the bus. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there, shall we? Catch you in a bit. Carlisle bus station is about a six minute walk from Carlisle railway station. It may be local buses I've found out, but Megabus and National Express, as you can see here, also call in. And not everyone stops here though, the Flix bus call at the Halston Hotel, which is much nearer the railway station. And Borders buses, I was just about to find out, don't use the bus station either. Right, <laughs> well, lovely lady in the office, I just asked about um, the Borders buses service and apparently it doesn't go from here at all. <laughs> it's a good start, isn't it? It goes from down by the railway station where I've just come from <laughs> by an arch apparently so we're going to go and have a look for the arch and um, yeah, hopefully get some supplies on the way oh, alright <laughs> right then guys um, take two I'm at a lonely bus stop in Carlisle why you may ask well because I am taking the X95 Borders buses service um, not to Gala Shields by Gala Shields all the way to Edinburgh, 14.46 it leaves and it gets into Edinburgh and um, about half past six this evening. Ooh, um, wish me luck on this one. I think it's just a way for the bus to show up and then pay the guy. I don't see how much you got, I've no idea how much it costs yet. Um, so we'll find that out. And then we'll see what the bus is like. Wish me luck, I think I'm going to need it. It wasn't long until our bus came into view, an ADL Enviro 200 MMC. And yeah, quite a few people had turned up by this point. On the way back from the bus station, I'd managed to eat a Cornish pasty, and I bought a few things to keep me going. Some water, uh, but not too much. I certainly didn't want to be needing the toilet the minute I got on the bus. Now, I also bought a jumbo packet of cheese and onion crisps, a packet of Starburst, or Opal Fruits as I prefer to call them, and half a packet of Skittles. I wasn't sure that was going to be enough to be honest, uh, but yeah, we'd see how it went. A payment for travel on this bus is by cash, contactless or pre-purchased mobile tickets. Oh, uh, single to Edinburgh please. Edinburgh, yeah. Right. <laughs> see you for a quarter of hours. Huh? Right. I'm in it for the long haul. So Wish me luck. <laughs> And when I told the driver where I was going, and the first thing he said to me, with a concerned face, was three and three quarter hours. And yeah, I laughed nervously as he searched for the fare. I'm not sure he has many people doing the full 95 odd miles from start to finish, really. Right, ten pound ten, please. Thank you very much. But eventually, the ticket was dispensed. Ten pounds and ten pence. I paid my money and went to find a seat. It was pretty busy at this point, wasn't it? But there were a pair located near the back, which I thought would be ideal. Uh, first impressions, um, <laughs> I was a bit worried about what I'd let myself in for, to be honest. We left on time, and from my seat I had an ideal vantage point to see what the bus had to offer. It looked quite smart for a local bus, and in my experience of previous journeys, well, most people on them are just doing local trips. Is it practical for a journey of nearly four hours? Well, we'd find that out, wouldn't we? And after driving around the streets for a minute, uh, we called in at the railway station where lots more people got on, and after which time it was already standing room only. Heading north over the River Eden, progress was a little slow at the beginning, and not surprising really. I counted a staggering 126 potential stops on the timetable. We encountered traffic on the junction over the M6 motorway, but we wouldn't be using that today. This was a bus doing a long, but in so many ways local, bus route, and we'd be heading up the A7 instead. 
Well, I didn't know it at the time, but this part of the journey was to provide some fantastic views. The weather would improve a bit too. So enjoy the scenery as we head towards our first major stop of the afternoon, Hoik. We arrived into the Scottish borders town of Hoyk at 15.30. Now, I'm not going to lie, apart from the views, the first hour and 20 minutes had been hard going. The bus was full and someone had been sat next to me for the whole time. Now that's to be expected when the bus is busy, isn't it? But the seats were quite tight and yet all in all I felt a bit cramped. The Hoyk uh, population about 13,500 was a lovely town I thought, although since 1969 it's had no rail connection. In fact, up until the opening of the Borders Railway in 2015, which runs as far as Tweedbank, 17 railway miles north, it was said to be the farthest large town from a railway station in the whole of the United Kingdom. Uh, so yeah, unless you've got your own transport, the bus really is the only option in terms of public transport, so yeah, no wonder it was so packed. Anyway, pleased to say most passengers got off here, so there was now plenty of space to relax and we were soon on our way again. I moved to the table seat behind me, one of two on this bus, and was now able to get a good look at the seat. And as I said, they did seem quite narrow and upright, but yeah, they were reasonably well padded and yeah, ended up at neck height here. The seat cushion itself was also well padded and three point over the shoulder seat belts were provided, and no armrests though. And the table itself was certainly large enough to accommodate all my rubbish and legroom was superb compared to the other airline style seating. And note here there is integrated wireless charging but there's also USB sockets on the seat backs along with cradles above for your phone. And notice this bus is bicycle friendly and there was space right at the front of the bus for two, uh, denoted by a cycle sign on the floor. The opposite, there is a designated space for wheelchairs. Now, I reckon it could be quite a challenge getting your bike on here when the bus is busy though, and you're fighting for space with push chairs and people shopping etc. I've seen buses with cycle racks on the front beneath a windscreen before now, and uh, yeah, externally I think is a much better way of transporting them personally. The observant amongst you will notice that we've just passed the Borders Buses 73 service, which runs from Selkirk to Galashiels Interchange. We're two hours and ten minutes into the journey now, and I'm passing Galashiels Railway Station, the penultimate stop on the Borders Railway from Edinburgh. And it's about an hour from here back to Edinburgh on the train, compared with the hour and a half I still had to run. It was a little bit tempting, but to be honest I was quite happy sitting here really as we pulled onto Stance 2 at Galashiels Bus Station, the Borders Railway can wait for another time. I couldn't find that much interesting stuff about Galashiels to be honest, although 
You may like to know that prog rock Genesis copycats Marillion's hit 1985 single Kaylee was partially inspired by lead singer Fish's time spent living in the town. So there you go. There was a driver change at Gala Shields where we'd arrived on time and departed on time too. A few people got on here including someone else who just could not resist travelling with their dirty feet up on the seats. Yeah, another one. Well our driver was having none of it, uh, telling them to sit up properly. Uh, yeah, there were at least three cameras on this bus from what I could see. As you may have gathered, there is no toilet on this bus, but I've been holding that quite well. <laughs> Unlike a previous passenger I suspect who may have had to improvise at some point during their trip. I wasn't going to be giving it a closer look either way to be honest. Well I tried the Wi-Fi which was excellent at connecting quickly. I was able to watch YouTube videos absolutely no problem at all. Brilliant stuff borders buses here. Other attributes? Well windows you can open yourself for fresh air are useful. Though there was only one open at the front here and yeah, that was enough to make it feel well a little bit too cold if anything right at the back. I'm sure you'll let me know that I could have moved seats. Uh, there was a, also a readable display near the front showing the next two stops and um, talking of which there was nothing major now between here and Edinburgh. And I found an orange twill in my bag which was a bonus and so I set about enjoying that whilst looking out the window hoping it wouldn't be pouring down by the time I'd arrived in the capital. Despite a bit of a hold up outside, we reached Edinburgh bus station slightly early. And overall, the experience had been fairly enjoyable, uh, though maybe the bus isn't really practical for journeys of nearly four hours. I mean, there's not much luggage space, for example. Then I guess people just aren't going the whole way to Edinburgh. And why would they? OK, walk up tickets on the train from Carlisle to Edinburgh, when I looked anyway, were about twice the amount I'd paid on the bus. But you can get advanced tickets between the two cities for less, and it's about three hours quicker. This is a bus for local people mainly travelling to and between the principal towns on route like Hoyk that don't have a rail connection. Well after disembarking I look back at the bus and keep an eye out for the overzealous security gang and a bid farewell and make my way to the nearby St Andrews Square for where I just took a minute or two to sum up the journey. 
Right then guys, Edinburgh, yeah got here, actually got here two minutes early would you believe, uh, Edinburgh bus station just down the way there. Um, what do you think of that? Let me know, <laughs> to be honest I'm pretty shattered now. I I'm kind of glad I did it, it was, feels like a bit of a sense of achievement. Uh, would I do it again? No. Um, what I might do, because I think the uh, the first half of the journey is probably the most scenic, what I, what I might do in the future is take that bus as far as Gala Shields and then um, get the train thereafter. Uh, that'd be a nice trip, wouldn't it? Um, Price-wise, I'm sure you guys can tell me how I could have done it cheaper, maybe with um, a, a day ranger or, or something like that. Um, but then again, you know, maybe I could have got a train ticket as cheap, if not slightly cheaper, in advance. But so uh, walk-up prices were at least twice as much as that. So yeah, I haven't had a bad day really. And it was a great bus, wasn't it? And the driver, the drivers were were really friendly. So yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments below, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and I will catch you on another adventure soon, I'm sure. Until then, cheers for now.